Hello again. In this episode, I'm going to look at the differential. I'm going to start rebuilding the rear suspension. I'm going to start preparing the underbody of the car ready for the rear suspension refit. First of all, though, I need to clean up this very tired old looking differential, get the cover plate off the back and assess the crown wheel and pinion for wear. I'll brush and scrape the worst off before setting to with some degreaser. You can see all of this, it's just taking the paint straight off. I'm not sure this is grease or under seal to be honest, but it's coming off quite easily. See there, the red oxide paint is literally tipping off as well. The way the paint is coming off here, it's almost like it's a stone chip that's been overpainted in red. Which is a bit odd as it looks as though it's directly onto the bare metal, but it's certainly making it a lot easier to get off. Okay, we've got some nice bits of the original red oxide there. So with the worst out of the way, I can now use the half inch socket to remove all of these quite loose fitting um, set screws on the cover plate. Should have added, of course, that I've uh, already drained the oil out of the diff taking the sump plug out the bottom there. Otherwise, this would be a mess right now. Okay. So what I'm looking for is wear here on the teeth of the crown wheel. One side of the tooth is called the coast side, one side is called the drive side. So in effect, when you are putting your foot down on the accelerator, the crown wheel will be pushed by the pinion on one side, which is the drive side, and then the other side will be the coast. So when you lift off, you're in effect, you're coasting, and uh, that's the side that will be getting the contact from the pinion as the, the backlash in the drive line reverses. And in effect, you go to engine braking rather than positive engine torque driving the car. So handily, the workshop manual has a one page guide showing for the kind of way you would look for on the crown wheel. So we can see that we've got a heel, which is the outer end and the toe on the inside. And then we've got the coast and drive faces of the crown wheel. So this one here is the ideal tooth contact. You can kind of see the area there, where if it's too much tooth contact, it's right in the bottom of the valley. Conversely, it's on the outside um, for low tooth contact. And then if it's too, too much toe contact or heel contact, that's where you'd expect to see the wear. So I've cleaned up a lot of the teeth on this part of the crown wheel so that you can see the drive face of these teeth. Now the ideal state is to have a broad area in here. So this being the toe end, this being the heel end, you want the wear pattern to be a kind of larger area in the middle here on towards the toe end. Now it looks to me as though there's a bit of a dirt buildup in this area. So this is kind of a broad area in the middle, which is good, but it's erring towards the heel end of the teeth. So the question is, is it really worth doing a full rebuild on probably what is a healthy differential? But the fact is it will not only ensure that this differential works properly, uh, the backlash will be correct, the bearings will be new, also the seals will, and it will be given a cosmetic uh, refresh on the outside as well. So. Um, I think it's probably worth sending this to a specialist to be done. I could do it myself, but I think actually it's uh, worth getting a specialist to do something like this because uh, I'd like it to be absolutely right. Something else to point out the differential as well are these two tags. Now this one here indicates the final drive ratio. So that's 43 over 14, which is the standard 3.07 ratio. So that's correct. And this BPL means that it's the power lock. If we look at the general description here. Um, it's a Salisbury 4HU tight rear axle. 
and the power lock there. So again, this shows that it's the right ratio and the right differential for the car. So it's always worth checking before sending it off to refurb as well. So those tags fit. One of them goes on here, like that. And then the ratio one was down um, at the bottom here. So uh, get this off to be refurbished now. Look forward to seeing that in a few weeks. Completely rebuilt and looking as new. As I mentioned in the previous episode, we're looking to revert the colour to its original silver grey colour. So I need to assess what's going on in the underbody here and strip it, prepare it for paint and paint it before the rear suspension can go back on again. So I'm going to spend a bit of time now looking at what needs doing and make a start. So if I take a screwdriver to this, for instance, this is a pot that I saw, I saw earlier. Okay, so as soon as I start chipping this away, it reveals localised rust areas that need treatment and application. So they're not too bad, but obviously if that's left, that's just going to propagate and get a lot worse. I think it's been saved by the fact that this car's hardly been used. So if I go up to this other one that was crunchy before, Okay, so a similar kind of story. You can just see the rust leaching out. Again, look a bit further. There's another one here. And I've already taken the flaking paint that's off this wheel arch eyebrow. So again, that's there's actually solid metal in there, but um, it all needs taking right back and redoing. Now, if I look further rearwards in the wheel arch and look up again, this view actually looks pretty good, but I just need to inspect every bit really carefully. So I'm going to give it a good clean down and decide what to do next. For jobs like this, I use a cheap pressurized spray can with a lance like this, kind of like you'd use in the garden. And that uh, just allows you to get into the area without completely soaking everything and putting the detergent where you need it. So I can quickly see it makes quite a lot of difference to the grubby undersides here. If you look at any pictures of any top restored cars, they just look as clean in these areas as they do on the outer panels as well. Doing all of this though, it really gets you to know the car in complete detail. So before I put the rear suspension back on, everything that's above it in the wheel arches and on the underfloor needs to be silver gray. And that means me scraping off all of the under seal that's in here. There are a few ways to tackle this particular problem. One is with an angle grinder and a wire brush, which is obviously quite messy and really not enjoyable. The second is with a heat gun and a scraper. And the other is with a chisel like this. So this is actually a wood chisel. And um, I've found this quite good, at, um, certainly on the flat surfaces in the past of working. The alternative to that is using dry ice blasting. So this patch here was done in a very short period of time with the dry ice blaster. And the great thing about that, of course, it means that I don't need to um, take the fuel tank out and worry about the fuel pipe here, which is um, obviously much more of a concern if I'm using an angle grinder. Um, let's see what it looks like with um, a chisel. Oh, that's really thick stuff. But again, that's actually coming off really quite well and easily, so I'm quite liking the look of this. So after a few minutes scraping, I've actually been quite successful and I've generated quite a big pile of uh, old underseal, so uh, other than my arms hurting a bit, I think that's pretty successful, so I think I'll carry on with this. see how much has come off already. Must be about a kilo of um, under seal. I can now start laying out the refurbished suspension components ready for reassembly. 
But before I do that, I've got a bit more preparation to do. Because I've painted these, there are a few areas inside here where there's just a little bit of paint buildup. So where there are going to be bearings and uh, tight clearances, tight tolerances are required, I just want to do a bit more cleaning up of these things. So I'm going to use um, a combination of a um, sharp knife and a Dremel with a wire brush just to get in there and clean everything up ready for reassembly. So I've given the workbench a clean so that it's only the mess that's actually made from this process that will fall on here so I can see what I've done and there isn't any other contamination. I'm just going to carefully scrape out inside all of these areas to just get rid of any drips and excess paint that's got inside. Don't want to go in too hard because that will actually score the surface in there. And in addition to that, I've got this Dremel wire brush. So I find these are really, really helpful. Just clearing out things like this in a not aggressive way. In effect, they get rid of the paint and polish up the surface, which is actually very handy. Now that I've got all the bearing surfaces clean, I can clean down the workbench again, and I've been able to get to this enjoyable part where I can lay everything out and check that everything fits, start doing trial fitting. So the fulcrum shaft here, made sure that they go through, the damper shaft, and uh, again here the inner fulcrum shaft, I've made sure that it goes through here as well as going through the distance tube. So I've now been able to lay out uh, wheel bearings, inner and outer, that's the outer fulcrum shaft kit, that's the new inner fulcrum shaft kit, and obviously the same the other side. Got hub oil seals, I've got the hubs ready to go, along with the new spline shafts left and right, and starting to get all of the necessary shims and everything in place as well. So, so I can now start to look at getting the universal joints in as well. One, two, three, four. So I'll start putting this together as small sub-assemblies. First of all, the upper wishbone with its universal joints before moving on to the hub with the spline shaft and the new wheel bearings. Then I'll do the outer fulcrum shaft into the hub to make sure I get the shimming right before moving on to the inner fulcrum shaft. Of course, I'll need the differential before I can bolt all of this back into the centre anyway. Under the workbench, I'm keeping the radius arms, anti-roll bar brackets, etc. that I won't need until later on in the build. Now, as you can see, I actually haven't quite got round to starting to reassemble the suspension yet, but that will definitely come in the next episode. I've also been adding a few more classic Jag pictures to the wall to make the place feel a bit more homely. Many thanks for watching. Please join me again next time.